Gomez. Walter makes a run ahead of it. Burkamp suddenly changed pace through the centre. It's Burkamp! That's magnificent! The move, and then this, which left Dabby's ass totally stranded. Hello and welcome to a Burkamp Wonsland and a very, very, very rare night indeed where you have four people actually from the WhatsApp ABW group. I thought this day would never come. We were a bit late because I was having a bit of an emotional moment. And I, had to, I had to mop my brow, wipe away the tears because it's uh, it's amazing. And... Uh, yeah, so top right hand corner, we have Richard Cactus Cash, the man we've had COVID 14 times so far this year. How are you doing, Treacle? <laughs> much better now, much better now. Thank you, Danny. How are you? Um, well, I had some soup, uh, two tins of mushroom soup. One of them was a year out of date, and the other one wasn't. So, by my making, that means that it was only six months out of date. I think that's how it works. And uh, for the first five or six mouthfuls, I dribbled it all the way down my face and onto my clean t shirt. It sounds like you've had an impressive evening. No, I feel yeah. like a child. Uh, bottom right, it's uh, the international man of mystery, who's uh, who's been smuggling himself all over the world. It's it's the femster. How are you doing? Good evening, all. Uh, yeah, good to be on the main pod. It's been a little while, hasn't it? But yeah, no, looking forward to it. Arsenal winning. I, I haven't been on when Arsenal won for a long time, actually. So. None of us have. It's been about a decade. <laughs> <laughs> Did you bring anything back from your your um, lovely little holiday you took? Did you bring me anything back? That's what I mean. I bought jet lag if you want it. No such thing. That's a, that's a made up <laughs> thing. If you, apparently, if you go around the world the other way, you don't get the jet lag. You have to go right, right to left. No, left to right. One of the two, possibly. I don't know. Someone else will have no idea who's never knowingly left the the Norwich County bylines. Is that bylines isn't even you know, a thing? I meant county lines. It's Nick in Norwich again. Nick, have you ever left? How far was the furthest you've been away from Norwich? Ipswich. <sighs> you dirty <laughs> stop out. Did you have a panic attack and have to rush back? Yes, I had to run very, very quickly. Okay, how's your? I don't talk proper down there. How's your blonde moustache coming on? Because you can see the rest of the beard, but not oh, your blonde it's fantastic. Bit. It's fantastic. Yeah. Have you decided at what point you're going to give up? What do you mean? With, the, with growing the beard thing. Are you going to no, give just, up at any point? No, just until everybody has a go at me at least once a day and says something sarky, so then I leave it for another day. And that's yeah. how this has been happening. Oh, dear. Sad times. Anyway, let's go and have a say hello to... <clears throat> some of the people in the chat some people are here really early michael was there at uh, 6 50 so that was one hour no it wasn't yeah an hour and 50 minutes ago someone's eager uh, i think he might have a cold dejan is also there i was there talking to him size here on time for a change that's lovely jimmy is there phil macker is there uh he's he's obsessed with his curtis tigers and his dead tigers anyway uh nerdran is here since you will go I mean, of all the goats, the sensual ones are my favourite. Don't get them mixed up with your sexual goat, because that will never end well. It says, if Arteta was here, he'd bin the lot of you for being late. I know we'd all be on massive 10 grand fines. Gemini Jedi is there, and uh, oh, Femster is there. Done, Jimmy. Michael, look at that. Michael is double dipping. He's on Twitch, and he's on YouTube. That's how we stat pad this show, people. So get on Twitch while you remember because uh, I need to go and put it on there. We had, we had about 14 people watching on Twitch the other week. That's fucking amazing. Uh, Mark is there. Hello, Mark. Philippe uh, is there. Avon, not Teddington, is there because he removed it. Who else is there? I'm going to say, ah, oh, Mr. Selby. Old Bean, what, what? So first thing I want to talk about, who's the um, who's the kit expert here? I suppose it would be the bloke who used to work in the Arsenal shop, wouldn't it? Wouldn't that be you, Rich? <laughs> that would be me, yes. I've got some uh, some pictures up. I've got a bit of an explanation. It's going to cover you all up, but we all know what you look like. Okay, uh, this is from Football London, and I stole it from now Arsenal. Uh, it says, Arsenal's decision to wear red shorts against Watford was a commercial decision from the club. 
in partnership with their kit manufacturer Adidas, which suggests Adidas are testing the waters to see if the red on red could be a success. So there's a picture there of uh, looks maybe Kieran Tierney, possibly it's got a number three or Xhaka. It's one of the two, three or thirty-four. Um, I went and found Arsenal wearing Puma. This is Lacazette against West Brom, wearing all red again with uh, and. I didn't like it. And then I've got another picture here of Arsenal back in the Giroud, Walcott, Gibbs days when we were, I think it might have been a dark blue short to go with the red kit. What's your thoughts on having an all red kit? Feel free to swear. Uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't like it. Um, it was a bit odd and a bit jarring um, when, I, when I saw it. Like, yeah, everyone, you know, me like the rest of the gooners everywhere, frantically s- scrolling through Twitter and the like, trying to find out why on earth we're wearing red shorts. Um, I don't mind it as a one-off, as a, as a, a kind of weird, random uh, kind of thing. If they are testing the waters, I think. For, for, well, I know uh, Twitter and, and and social media isn't the be-all and end-all, but I think the uh, the 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 uh, what's the word I'm looking for the 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 uh, overriding opinion seems to be a big fat smelly no uh, to the red shorts. I, I don't mind it as like a say a one-off, a bit of an odd oddity, and you know them trying to ch- uh, change out something. But no, it's 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 white shorts. It's that's that's what we've always worn. That's the Arsenal. That's what you you look at you look out for, and you in instinctively know who you're who you're watching and who you're looking at you know the red 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 shirts white sleeves white shorts you know yeah I, i'm not a big fan of the of the um of of the red shirts per uh, red shorts per se but um i don't mind it as a one-off did you I, I take it you was not a big fan no i mean i'm not a fan of kits anyway i was all play naked but that's never gonna happen <laughs> I don't know why I said that. I wouldn't want to see grown men running around naked at all. I'm just not a fan of kids. Full stop. There you go. Delete to pretend that never happened for me. Before we carry on, we've had some people. Uh, Nick, Nick is the only one here who gives a damn about this. Nick, we had N5 Guna followers on Twitch a couple of days ago. And then we had Gen X 48K. I hope that means Spectrum. Uh, followed us two hours ago. And they subscribed with Prime, Nick. Isn't that wonderful? That is very wonderful because neither of those accounts are me. Fair enough. Right, you be quiet while I talk to Femi. Femi, what's your thoughts on the kit? Um, I mean, I'm watching Real Madrid um, right now, and I'm just thinking. I'm just thinking, what if Real Madrid rocked up with white shirts and I don't know blue shorts as part of their permanent kit? <laughs> People would be their fans would be outraged. So I think we, you know, it's just a standard, isn't it, that you have as a football club. And I think once you get into the waters of, like, I, I thought there was a kit clash or something. That's why it was changed. Um, but once you get into the muddy waters of changing the home colours, that's, mm. you know, you're you're playing with fire there. Because then if you accept that as fans, that they could do anything with your home kit, basically. Um, I think... What did we have that that black current one once for the uh, yeah, for the last season at Highbury? Yeah, and that uh, turned Highbury out to well. be a miscoloration of a black and white photo, and it turns out we <laughs> never ever wore that color. <laughs> Fucking yeah. idiots! Oh, well, there you go. So yeah, I mean, but if you start changing little things on kits, especially home kits, you're going down a dangerous path. We we've seen some crazy stuff with our away kits, you know, down the years. So. You, as fans, I think some people, some people think oh, it doesn't really matter. But there's some things as fans you got you have to stand up for. Like I said, if Real Madrid changed from all white as their home kit, their fans would not be impressed. So why should we as Arsenal fans be? Very true indeed. Nick, what's your thoughts on it? I can really care less, to be honest. I mean, they're paying us so much money. Let them do. I say, well, to a point, I say let them do what they want. I I understand why people do that and get upset because of tradition and stuff like that. But like I say, just let them do the hell what they want with the away kit. But, you know, leave the home kit, the colours, what that is. Because, you know, I suppose the more commercial and Americanised what's going to happen, we're going to all change eventually, aren't we? 
Because yeah. I mean, just speaking of American because they they do that thing um, in America with the NFL kits. They have that that Nike started doing that a couple of years ago. That um, that whole um, is it called Color Rush, where they, where they have like one game a year where they wear like a slightly different um, uh, j- jersey and uniform. Do, do you guys know what I mean? Or um, no. Uh, that, that, so for instance, um, so for instance, like the New England Patriots, uh, they're they're their shirts were navy blue with silver shorts and with like a little gray stripe. And then every, every year there was like a designated day. Every team had it where they had what it was, it was called, I think it was called the color rush. So like their kit was, was very, very, it was different. It was, it was like all blue with these red pipings and, and, and whatnot. And maybe that's it's something that they're, um, they're, they're, they're looking to, to go for, um, uh, with these kits where you, you have one designated day where you have that kind of oddity kit kind of thing. I think like I said, the, the, the home kit should always be sacrosanct should always be um, the red and white with the right shorts and, and stuff like that. You know, the, the, the away kit, I'd be happy to yellow and blue alternate every year and they can throw the baby out with the bath water with the third kit and go nuts with all their weird and wonderful designs on that. To be fair, on... the fans, the fans don't buy the shorts. I mean, if you if yeah. if I saw a fan with full kit and shorts, I'd be pretty shocked to be honest with you. But it's it's watching the it's watching the screen, isn't it? I think someone in the chat said it. it's like you're watching. You don't you don't know that it's Arsenal anymore when you're watching. If you see that, you just don't. You're like, is that is that Arsenal? Is it really Arsenal? It's just really weird, isn't it? That's all. Yeah, I think Femi's right, and I think it's like Adidas have looked at that and thought, why are we selling like 20 shirts to one pair of shorts? You know, and it's like, well, one, you know, we sell them to adults and they're never going to wear them, and two, it's always bloody cold over here. So who are going to get, who's going to buy them? And but when it's warm, football season's over. Um, Nick, can you or some, can some one of you two keep an eye on the YouTube because everyone's using potty language. We we allow the potty language. Don't worry about. It. You swear as much as you want, people. But then I have to go and approve your your things. So these three are all moderators on because we only have people who are part of the podcast as moderators because moderators in general are are actual scumbags. They um they do a lot of ass kissing, and I don't like it. And I'm not having it. You hear me? Um, I'll be back right, in two I'm, seconds. Oh. I've upset him. He's going he's gonna to get the big hammer or something. I don't know. Um, my <laughs> plan is YouTube for, hammer out. That's it. I, my plan that would be that the the red kit is red and white home kit every time. Slight variations on it, and then the away kit, like like Richard was saying, blue and yellow every time. No changing. Slight alterations of the designs, maybe that's acceptable. And then the the third kit, I'd have a competition where all the asked young Arsenal fans they can all make their own third Arsenal kit, and then we'd have a competition and we'd pick a winner, and then we'd change every kit every three years. And so there's a continued rotation. Every kit lasts for three seasons. And then I would uh, have all of the kits made by Arsenal, made in the UK. By... Are we not doing a white kit next season? Is that not the rumour? Oh, no. Oh, no, no. We did that We did that for the, the that, um, campaign, actually, didn't we? There you go. Don't that get is, we had a white campaign. Yeah, we had, we had a white kit once, didn't we? Um... This is a mock-up of what I think the next season's uh, third kit is going to be. Um, pink. Okay, it's pink. I don't know how they've what kit this was to colorize it in pink, but um, I like personally, I like pink kits. I can't wear it because I look like a blancmange. I don't wear any of the kits because I am a blancmange, but it looks a bit like the Palermo um, home kit, which is a bit pink. And I think Juventus have had a pink kit in recent years. Um, anybody like the pink kit? Yeah, I don't mind it. I'm not averse to it. I quite quite like it. Didn't um, Leicester have a, um, an, a, a pink away kit? Um, uh, a couple of seasons ago, they might well have done. But here's a uh, here's a comparison of the um, Saka wearing both of our current kits in both forms. Now, no one can tell me that that red looks better than the white, does it? It just looks odd. It just doesn't. It doesn't. Yeah, it just doesn't sit right. It doesn't look right. No, anyone else? It's because we were just used to the other one. That's why it stood out so much. Yeah, but I, mean, I remember Carpenter having like an argument with someone on Twitter in the summer for about like three hours that the white stripe on the side was too big or too small. You know, so <laughs> if he was if he was ever come on again, he'd probably have kittens. Yeah. Well, there you go. Um, yeah, talking of uh, of Carpenter, that was something I meant to. I wanted to go and find. 
this is something that you know we know chris is often the butt of the jokes here and he loves it he, he loves he loves to have um have people pick on him but he did something the other day um okay right i am going to try and do my best to this people this might take a minute or two but believe me it is going to be worth it so i'm going to do share screen i always worry about sharing screens because i always think i'm gonna have the wrong thing open and then i'm gonna to have to go to prison um right here we go right people this is going to take a couple of minutes feel free to fast forward but i think it's a really good point our chris carpenter right you know he hates arteta he hates the arsenal and he's not been on board that's why he's hardly ever on the show a series of tweets he did a few days ago this great the great thing about being level-headed well-educated and rational a uh, rational individual is you have the ability and self-awareness to hold your hands up and admit you could be wrong with that said here's a thread on mikhail arteta's uh, arteta's arsenal this season to date see my eyes move quicker than my mouth that's the problem i got and he's sort of things about like togetherness at the start of the season it was a car crash uh, what was an unbalanced uh, squad performing like a group of strangers has been mold molded together into a solid group who fight for each other and the manager week in, week out. So he's, he's right there. And the youth, he was saying he, he, he doubted um, Arteta would bring the youth through and give him a chance, and he has. Then he said the signings, Ben White was a gamble, Tommy Asher was largely unknown, Erdegaard, leap of faith, Ramsdale, an expensive show of faith. And... Uh, and uh, pretty much all the signings have clicked and lessons were learned from William Gate, as he calls it. The big decision, he said, was uh, dropping Leno for Ramsdale, which was uh, which was huge. And he goes on to say, uh, trimming the fat at a key time, a bummer young sale after being the manager who sanctioned and trumpeted his new contract less than two years ago was a huge call at a huge time. Not replacing him was also a risk. He made that decision and the squad grew closer as a result. Um, adapting and learning his trade, blah de blah, and then uh, um, unity between the club and the fans. He talks about that as well, and then he goes entertainment. Now, this is the one of the main things for Chris was remember him saying that it just wasn't entertaining to watch, and he said I was worried at the start, really worried about, really worried and very bored. Arsenal were pl uh, playing sterile, dull, often depressing football. Mikel has delivered a team and a style that has finally reminded us uh, just how talented a squad we have and how good they are to watch and then finally he ends it with in summary thank you Mikel you've made many doubters including myself believers and whilst we still have a way to go signings to make and results to achieve we're in good hands that's down to you Mikel you your staff and your players we are the Arsenal um, stop sharing come back to you people um, Nick what did you think to that is that's that's a hell of a statement, isn't it? And unlike something Chris would ever do, I thought. I mean, the educated bit at the beginning, I thought, was pushing it a bit. But what do you think about the rest of it? I don't know. I mean, you posted it in our WhatsApp group. I think I got about... I just even replied to himself, and there's about 15. I think I got about two in and got bored, <laughs> to be honest. But we know what Chris is like. I mean, I mean, I said it about Arteta. I think most people have said, like, because he says things that just upset people, like this process, and it becomes a bit of a meme, you know, like Wenger saying he didn't see it, and what was it? Um, Emery with his old Eschplain thing, and good evening, and stuff like that. But I mean, we all agree there's what he's trying to do has got to be done. We've got to try and rebuild, you know, a squad, not by how Man City and Chelsea do it. So we all agree there is a process, but it's just whether or not Arteta was as fundamental to that process as he thinks he is, and probably not. But, you know, like I said, he's he's doing all right at the moment, so we just have to let him get on with it. And I suppose the big test will come in the summer, whether we get top four or not is when he re replaces the strikers or gets new strikers in, because that's probably like the final piece of the Arteta jigsaw he's trying to do. So if he gets two decent strikers in and we, you know, hit the ground running next season, then give him another long deal. Cause I think, what's he got a year left after this deal? Yeah. So that's what I'd probably look at like September, October time. If everything's gone well in the transfer market, look, look at either extending his contract or, replacing him then I, mean, look at I this think you'll get, a new, you'll get a new contract before that um look at this from Sai. chris has gone and chris has offered the hand of friendship to arteta and size put can we expect expect him to accept french farmer league <laughs> french league is a farmer's league <laughs> 
<laughs> what do you think about what he put um, for me? And then, to then, be fair, then... I, I I think that echoes a lot of my thoughts. Can you hear me? Yeah, you can. Hear yeah, me. yeah. Okay. Um, I was very very fifty fifty for majority of the time. I like the way Arteta talks, but I couldn't see it on the pitch. That's just me. I, I wasn't as strong as Chris was, but I couldn't see what, we, especially when the entertainment factor, what were we producing? So I think a lot of what he said, I can absolutely resonate with. And, but I'm, I'm, you know, I've been turned around as well. I've been, not that I had to be totally turned around. I was never sort of, or oh, get him out and all of that stuff. No, no, no. I, I liked the, the, you know, the, the way he speaks, the, the, the way that he, he's bringing the value of the club up, the professionalism, the stuff that you hear about behind the scenes when you read articles that he does. And especially for me, and I think he's smart with this one, the, the thing that started winning me over was when he started talking about Arsene Wenger and bringing him back to the club. That I love, I love all that stuff. To be honest with you, I want to. I, I said, you know, if the club can't make that bridge, if he's making that bridge, then he's a he's a smart man. So slowly but surely, he kept winning me over. And like Chris said, then you start seeing the the performances on the pitch, the shots on goals. When you're having four or five shots a game, it's tedious football. And if anyone wants to tell me otherwise, then I think you're, we're all going to be lying to ourselves. It was tedious to watch, but something's clicked recently, and long may it continue. That's what I say. Um, got some questions from our Carl. Excellent, uh, Richard. What's your thoughts on on what uh, Chris has said, and and do you give him a, a, a bro hug for it, or do you just say stop being a big minge? <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, I'll, I'll back the pirate on this one. You know, it in football nowadays, football fandom, and especially, like, say, with with online uh, fandom and mo- modern football and stuff like that. You know, people can become really, really entrenched in their views and um, and their viewpoints and opinion, and and will will absolutely die on whatever hill they've chosen to die on. Um, so like, you know, I'm, I'm glad that he's, he's kind of come around and he's, he's been, you know, open-minded to, to, to say that he's been brought around, um, and stuff like that. It it shows, shows, shows maturity and shows, you know, that he's, he, like I said, he's not a, not a dickhead, like, you know, um, so yeah, fair play to the pirate. Um, I, you know, I, I've always, and it's not me saying like you know I'm after time or anything like that. I've I've always been impressed by um, Arteta and have been for quite a while a, a bit of a, an Arteta apologist in in because um, I've seen because I was I was won over by his words basically like went straight off the bat when he came in and, and what he was saying about the non negotiables and the um, the things that he wanted to put around the culture that he wanted to build like straight away that was that was music to my ears but i could also completely see why chris was despondent with the football and why femi was despondent with with the football because it's it's taken a long time um to to get to these shoots you know the 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 stop start nature of this of 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 how it's happening and you know in 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 modern life you know people want results straight away they want they want turnaround straight away um so it, it it's not surprising that it's taken a while for him for him to um to be won over but yeah i'm i'm glad that it's 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 starting to click and it's you know it's it's coming to fruition and and you know he's put implementing the the changes that that have needed to be done at arsenal since when wenger was was back was in because you know so, some of the cultural problems that we've had um <laughs> uh, some of the, uh, the the problems that we've had uh, come from the Wenger era, you know the 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 the, the lack of um, uh, energy off the ball, the complete, you know, being passive off the ball, like that wasn't uh, an Emery thing or something that Emery or even uh, what's it called Wenger had that in the in the final um, 
uh, you know, few years of of, of even his reign. So, um, and you know, I'm I'm laughing now when you look at like say Man United. Man United are going through exactly, well, it's exactly very similar to what we were going through in the thing. You know, a poisonous dressing room. You know, players not playing for the manager and stuff like that. And what we've done with Arteta is what Man United needed to have done, but thankfully haven't been able to, or haven't had the, 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 the balls or the guile or the, you know, the foresight to do. So yeah, no, um, I'm super happy with, uh, with what uh, Arteta is, is doing. Um, and hopefully let's like say he can he, win more fans around and the, 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 with the more positivity that we're playing and, you know, um, uh, like I said, the 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 better that we're doing, the, you know, the the more wins we're getting, the more points we're racking up, we're getting a really really good unity um, between the fans and the team, you know. And, and I think going back to your your sh- your shorts thing uh, that you said about the the kit at the st- top of the program, you know, one of the things I I saw a couple of people um, saying uh, about they they were unhappy about what the club was doing with that, and I was like, oh. I know it's only a small thing, but I really don't want it to ruin the unity and the goodwill that Arteta and the players and that have have um, fostered between you know the club and the fans. Because at the minute, it's it's going it's going really really positive, and seemingly, Touchwood, the only way is up. Yeah, uh, you know what? Also, what I'd say is, I mean, I've been season ticket for ten, I think about ten years now, nine to ten years. And this atmosphere has been the best mm-hmm. since I've been there, I would say. Consistently, as in, you're not getting the oh, that noise that you hear oh, when someone gives away the ball. or oh, All those you know noises. It, it's a lot more encouragement. Um, we haven't been behind, to be fair, in a lot of games at home. But there's a lot of encouragement from the fans. There's a lot more noise in the stadium than there ever has been. And I think the players do feed off of that as well. And I remember when Arteta first was talking about the fans and he was saying, you know, we need them. We need to feed off of them. And sometimes it all sounds like just rubbish, to be honest with you. But it's kind of just what he predicted. You know, the players seem to love the fans. You see what our away games, how they celebrate and other teams don't like it and all that stuff. But it's because the fans just give that energy. Our away fans have always been brilliant, but now there's a, there's a kind of at least if you know these players are going to fight for the badge, you know they'll make mistakes, but you know it, it is what it is, you know. So no, I, I can honestly say it's the atmosphere at the, at the Emirates has been brilliant this season. Can you remember how bad it got though, Femi? Because I remember um, the, was it 2013? I got I went to the first game, you know, the Villa game where we lost. Oh mate! <laughs> and obviously that was before we bought Ozil and that. And that was horrible. I mean, I, I'm, a, I'm a big guy. I mean, I was when I was like, trying to get to the car, I was outside, they were fighting. But one, yeah. I was Arsenal fans fighting Arsenal fans, and they were getting angry. They were smashing car. I thought, bloody hell, I said, I, I've been for a few years. That was just, like, so <laughs> bad. And I think that's why, um, like, some of the, the social media, like the AFTV and stuff, get so much grief, because when we go to football or whatever and it finishes we can go home we don't have to turn the radio on it's done but now we just see stuff that reminds of us what happened constantly over the next three or four days and if anything that just winds us up you know whereas now if it's going well that makes us a little bit more happier until the next game you know what there's been some bad games at the emirates i remember um I'm sure you guys remember the Swansea game that we lost. I think it was 2-1 or 2-0. And their second goal or third goal, I can't remember, a player just ran straight through on our goal from the halfway line with one pass <laughs> and scored. I think it was Michu. Michu scored yeah, two goals against us. Mate, if you saw the stadium, there was people kicking the back of chairs, fighting in the... St- and that was Swansea. And I was like, no. that. And then the Emery season... I actually felt like just giving up. I was just like, I don't want to watch this absolute garbage, rubbish team. It was just, like you said, it was like Man United fans must feel now. But, you know, it, it, it did get crazy. But 
fair play to Mikel, you know, he that's one thing that he uh, he does seem to like like uh, Rich was saying, he he speaks a good game and he he continues to give out this positive messages no matter what the situation is. If it, it, you know, eventually it seems to have just worked, <laughs> isn't it? Um, someone made a point about Man United. I'd say they're probably in their second or even third generation of bringing in all these big stars. We did we learned made our mistake with Louise Check and Louise. Czech and uh, William, and that was all kind of roughly a three or four year period where all this, or maybe four, four year period, all that happened. And we've learned our lesson, and we moved on for it. And we've realised uh, you do win stuff with kids, but uh, they're going through it again. And now, even after one season, they're saying, "Well, Ronaldo's got to leave, Edson Cavani's got to leave, Pogba's going to leave." And most of these are players that, what individually in any one team, they'd be what some of the best players playing for that team. But it doesn't seem to matter whether you change the players or whether you change the the owners or whether you change the manager at Man United. Nothing's working, and oh, I love it. It's absolutely brilliant. Rich, um, the sensual goat. Um, I've had to put um, Raj's Giroud Lama up there, the top right hand corner, to, to to scare off the goat in case he starts getting a bit front randy. And says, will Arteta declare himself emperor? or leave at the first big opportunity? Because that's something I worry about. Now that um, Giroud, now, now that Arteta is is making people go, oh, actually, decent football, oh, doing stuff with the kid, like all oh, the stuff Chris has pointed out, are you worried? Um, no, no, not 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 at the minute. Um, I, I get the impression from, from Arteta that this is his project this is his process and he's he's all in and that he wants to see this um see this through you know he he seems to have a lot of um a lot of input and uh, you know he seems to be spearheading it for the most part so i i i i don't think he's going to leave for for pastures new anytime soon i don't think um you know although Although we're we we you know we are on an upward t- trajectory, it also has been fairly um, a little bit bumpy per, uh, uh, to for want of a better word. Um, um, so I don't know how many teams bigger than Arsenal, not that there's many, that would would come in and try and and, and snap him up kind of thing because it's still a bit of a risk when you think of how how new a manager he is and how young and inexperienced i i i i think he's going to see going to stay through to emperor status and um yeah hopefully he's um his new groove is uh, is good he's basically got a blank, blank slate though hasn't he mm. he's he's working with not a blank checkbook but he can do what he wants in terms of i'm sure the cronkies are delighted that they do not have to get it involved <laughs> they basically can say to him and edu uh look after the club and we'll be watching from a distance that's i bet you that's all they do they just look at the numbers and say oh yeah this this much money's coming in this much money's coming in oh yeah yeah that's good that's good and then that's it i don't think they they don't want to get involved in any of that stuff so i'm sh- telling you the reason why he went to america in january during the transfer window was to do with his contract it wasn't about well as you see it wasn't about signing players because we didn't sign anyone it was about his contract and i'm sure before the end of the season before the end of that documentary he would have signed a new contract i'm pretty sure of it it, it, what more do you want as a manager you're you're getting backed in terms of just do what you want to do yeah you want this player uh yeah he's in he's within our budget so yeah just have at it and that's it the, they're just giving free reins to whoever. It's just, it's just a weird, weird club. But I guess they, they're just delighted. They're like, Fip, we don't have to fly over there all the time and get involved in any of this rubbish anymore. We've just got two people that are just who just look after the club and do what they want with it. Got any thoughts on it, Nick? Or are you busy checking if people are using swears? They're being very naughty. In, in are they? You two, very, very naughty. Dirty boys. <laughs> Only the people uh, from Norwich are being naughty. Oh, there's no surprise there. Phil Mack are being a tit. Um, without going into, uh, I think we move on from that a little bit, without getting into the politics of it, because it's a complete mess, 
Rich, where do you see the future of Chelsea? Because today there's rumoured that uh, an, I think an, an English Chelsea fan is wanting to buy them. I don't know if he's made the money robbing banks or beating up old ladies or, or doing any of that other kind of nonsense or swindling <laughs> FFP. But are Chelsea in trouble? Could this be our chance to go and overtake them in the, the standings? Uh, I would um, absolutely love for that team, for that club to get absolutely liquidated. I I cannot stand Chelsea uh, 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 whatsoever. I, you know, this I've always I've always hated. Um, I, I really hate other teams and stuff like that. But I've always hated Chelsea because obviously I'm I'm from West London. I grew up in West London. And in the in the eight you know late eighties early nineties and stuff like that, the, the amount of racism you used to see from from Chelsea and stuff like that, you know you'd see CFC NF uh, or spray uh, everywhere, and there was this. Uh, I remember there was this old bastard who lived on my estate. This oh, excuse my language, Danny. This old geezer who lived on the estate, uh, this Chelsea fan. And he always used to give me abuse because obviously, you know, my dad was Egyptian. So I was from an interracial family and he'd always calling me half breed and all this sort of stuff. So because of him, I've always hated Chelsea. And then when they came along with their blood money and ripped up football and showed that, you know, having a bottomless pit of money can is sustainable and will work in football. And it just completely ruined us at the time. And then so I would love nothing better for them to be absolutely go back down to the clowns car of football that they were with their cars around the pitch uh, and stuff like that. But I, I fear that they have got too good of a business model to f- mess it up too badly you know what with their 80 million people out on loan out on loan and you know that that business model of seemingly loaning every player out to every club with their big wide net and then if one of them does well they then sell them for 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 big money and stuff like that it would um yeah it's um i i unfortunately i don't think that they'll 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 completely fail but i would love to see it I think I think their business model is a bit too good for them to completely capitulate. Well, if you look, if you think about it, you got you're not going to get anyone but billionaires buying them. So it looks like they're kind of going to the model that we have, but less one owner, less a Stan Kroenke, more you know a consortium of American owners basically. And like I just said, the American owners, all they want to do is see the money ticking over. As long as, you know, they're not going to pump billions like uh, um, their previous owner did. They're not going to they're not going to do that. They're not going to write off one point two or one point five billion, whatever he's writing off. And if, the most that you're going to get is they either run like Arsenal, which is they put in little bits of money, restructure loans, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, or they run like Man United, which is the money that they're paying for the club. They start taking it back in dividends and all that kind of palaver, you know. But like like Rich said, that Abramovich got them into a place now where they're self-sustaining. So they kind of run that self-sustaining model, even though I heard talk that their wage bill was a bit too high. But, I mean, they've got a load of players that they can get rid of and they've just got like a conveyor belt in their youth team as well. You know, they've got, like someone just said in the chat, VK said they've got Broja and, and Gallagher. They could literally, mm-hmm. you know, strip themselves of two senior players on high wages and replace them with those two young players. And, you know, it, so they're, they're kind of running a, a good model, you know, and any anyone would be a fool not to buy Chelsea because you, most people want to be in the Premier League. That's the aim of most of these ambitious crazy you know owners they want to be in the premier league it's exposure it's it's fleecing fans that's what the premier league is all about <laughs> they fleece fans for as much as and anything that you can and who better to do it with than chelsea nick i just had a look his net value is about a billion dollars but somewhere between 800 million and a 
pounds and a billion dollars, which is roughly about the same thing. That's not enough to buy Chelsea. I think Roman wants about 1.5 to 2 billion. So it might be like, um, like Fem was saying, where it's going to be run the same way we do. Because he hasn't got the money to buy it and then pump an absolute, well, like Roman did, pumped in 1.5 billion. And the bloke, um, Nick Candy, his name is, he's married to Holly Valance. <gasps> Why is he buying a football club when he's married to Holly Valance? I'd never leave the room. Oh, I like who Holly Valance is. Yes, I know who Holly Valance is. She's very nice. I don't know yeah, who Holly but... Valance is. You do? Who's Holly Valance? Oh, so that, maybe that might have been about 15, 20 years ago. But... She was <laughs> Nothing Neighbours, Australian actress, and then she did that. Um, that I think it was a, a Turkish song by a bloke, and then she did it, and it's going touch, touch, and she's all, all wet and lingerie and sitting there looking like she's done a back in. You, you sound very knowledgeable on that video there, Danny. I've watched it a bit too times. What, today? <laughs> Look at this, the grief I'm getting. Danny, you don't leave your room. I'll have you know I left the, left the house on the 26th of November last year. So I'm not staying in all the time. Um, yeah, VK says, let me... Not Google, duck, duck, go. Google will track you down and kill your pets, allegedly. Um, <laughs> 70 million rubles, I hope. Um Oh, there we go. Phil says, a poor man's naughty Kylie. She was uh, lovely. Yeah. I think she was married, seeing some Russian billionaire before that anyway. So oh. what's your thoughts on it, Nick? Are you are you hoping that they end up getting the, having all their players taken off them and bugger off back down to the conference where they belong? <laughs> Probably. I mean, they were on the verge of going until Abramovich bought them. They were going the way of Wimbledon, weren't they? They were like, that's why they, would he buy it for a pound? And yep. like, took on all the debt. And I mean, I don't like the bloke because, you know, I look at, you know, it's obviously Man City have done the same thing, but they did it after Chelsea. So not as many people care about it, you know, once the second, you know, you know, it's what the first one, but he hasn't done anything for the club. He refused to buy the ground back off the supporters of what they paid for it about 30 years ago. I don't think he's done anything to the training ground of any note. You know, he hasn't upgraded it or, you know, and the only thing that he's got is all those kids in the academy. And the only reason they are there is because he pays more money than anybody else. He ruined so much of football in the mid 2000s. I mean, people actually forget the first few years when Marini was there. He had about 70 players on the books, first team players, not like, and so they brought in squad rules. They brought in all these rules, tried to do financial fair play, which just basically ruined it for everybody else, you know, because they, you know, they were struggling. And, you know, when he go, I don't, I think that unless they get someone in the side, they are going to struggle. Cause I mean, you say oh, well, how great their academy is. So what great academy players have they got playing for their side now? Yeah, but they, they, they don't bring them. They don't bring them through to the first team squad. They that's what they flog them, and and they get they get they get rid of them for 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 big money and stuff like that. that their their net spend, considering like you know that the, uh, the, they they can they can buy Kepper for eighty million and then realise that he's uh, shite and then spend another what 60 70 million on mendy and it doesn't matter they can spend 50 million on werner oh, it doesn't really matter we're going to go buy lukaku for 90 million mm -hmm. their net spend uh, as far as i'm aware and someone can um uh, pr prove me wrong or something like that um isn't that bad it's not it's not like ridiculous kind of thing because you know they stay they're all their little uh, academy kids or uh, people that they, they 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 buy in like the the Kaku's the first time like the Salah like they sell on for decent money kind of thing that it's all little increments kind of thing so that's their business model their business model is they have this wide net of of like i think their, their list of loan pays which it was at one point was ridiculous they all go off get experience at all these clubs and then th they all get sold they, they don't make their way through to the first team they get sold to to um, I, I mean i couldn't tell you all of the names of the players because i hate chelsea so i try not to pay too much attention to it but that's their business model i think i think they're still going to go along with that business model and i think they're set up well enough that they're they're not going to fall off a cliff yeah, they, they, I mean, look at look at this summer, for example. They sold 
Well, they loaned out a few. The, the uh, guy to Southampton, and Conor Gallagher, as we said. They sold a guy to Crystal Palace, who was highly rated uh, centre-back. They sold uh, Liveramento uh, to Southampton. <laughs> you know, that's literally paying <laughs> for another... It pays for... And I, I think that's where we're, we're, we're not doing our business right. We don't have... Look at the sales that we're making. We're selling Genduzi for ten million. We're selling Mavropanos for three million. <laughs> you know that that's the difference, basically, in in your spending power. Especially if you're going to run the same type of model as each other, your spending power comes from. Let's be honest, is because most people get similar TV rights and stuff like that. Fair enough from Champions League, but I guess in the other revenue would be from your player sales and big loans and stuff like that. So that's something that we're going to have to get right. But I think it will take us a few a few years to, to get that right. Yeah, I'm not sure the um, loan thing is going to work. So I know they're redoing a lot of rules in the summer for like the loan things. Like you said, I think they, like said, they've had like 40, 50, 60 players out on loan at some point. And I think that's sort of like a monopoly thing. Whereas if they've got all the players because they're paying more money than everyone else do, you know, for the kids. That's why they're probably, I think, I think they're running their academy, making more profit than the first team is when you look at, you know, what they're doing. But I just, I just think that's a bit of a fake club and everything they've won has just been plastic because it's been bought. And I know you could argue that United did that throughout most of the nineties and maybe to some extent us, because we were earning decent money compared to them than Liverpool. But, United made their money because they went big commercially, you know, worldwide, you know, with their sponsorship deals. They sort of made it themselves. So you sort of accept that. But when someone just like just gets given it and it just doesn't, it just, just seems a bit fake to me. You know, that's why we say to the, like the firm of Chelsea supporters, oh, well, we won this, we won the World Club Cup. I just, oh, shut up. It's all plastic. It's like, it's like you're playing a video game with the cheats on. It just doesn't count. I'm just looking at their sales in the summer. Tamori to Milan, 26 million. And then uh, Mark something to Palace, 21 million. And then Am- Abraham, back. 36 million. Uh, Zuma, the cat kicker, 31 million. But for what See, you were saying... This Mitch- is what I'm talking about. That's the that's that list. Yeah. It's not, yeah. you know, it, it's not one ginormous like Coutinho, that big 150 million thing. It's those incremental 20 million, 20 million, 30 million. That's where they do their business. That's how they're sustaining themselves really, really well. Sorry, Danny. Over the last five seasons, their net spend per season is 26.6 million. Which is, I mean, Man City's is 101, Man United's 75, Everton 55, ours is 50, Brighton 40, Liverpool 18. So 26, not bad, is it? Yeah, pair sales, player sales always. Um, mm. Yeah, it is. Nice. All right. What else should we talk about then? Um, we've got Leicester can I, can coming I up. Talk about something quickly before we talk about uh, Arsenal stuff. This yeah. NF- NFT business that's breaking all over the social media tonight. What, what's what's your thoughts on that? Because I'm of this I'm of this mindset, and I've been thinking this recently that the Premier League are playing a dangerous games with fans. As in, you can fleece your fans as much as you want, but when you start pushing your fans into stupid things like NFTs, sorry if anyone's into that, but people just don't know enough about it. And then you're hearing that you know the John Terry thing that he was pushing all over the social media and all other people were pushing. It lost ninety percent of its value. Like what? What is going on? And then you're hearing that the Premier League are now in talks to start selling it to fans. And you're thinking, hold on a minute, how how much longer? What is it? Everything that need, that we need to fleece the fans for? What what's your thoughts on that, guys? <laughs> Richard's <laughs> Rich shaking his head for those at home and on the toilet. Well, I know what NFTs are, and I know how they work, I and I know it's are. a pyramid scheme. It's just like um, <laughs> so many other things. You get someone who makes something that doesn't exist, and then they sell it on to someone else because then they, they hope that the hype will make it worth more. And we have seen it with so many YouTube stars, so many other things like the John Terry thing, where you get something, and then a load of people get it, thinking it's going to go up in money, and then as soon 
soon as it starts creeping up in value, alleged value, because everyone's into it and you've got some stars into it, all the people behind it then sell it all, and then the price of it plummets to absolutely nothing, and then everyone's left. It's like there was um, – what was that, the massive scandal with uh, – it was like you used to buy virtual players. That thing that was on yes, for about yes, three – Yes, 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 that's right. What was that yeah. called? Oh, I forgot what that thing was called. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. So I, I don't index, hear that yeah. advert anymore. Yeah, football index. That's it. Yeah. Then I the don't people hear that behind that anymore, yeah. took all the money out of it, and now they're in shitload of trouble. And everyone who made it, you've got a load of stuff that doesn't exist anymore. And this is the same thing. All it is going to be, and like, for people who don't know, all we have to do is make um, at ABW. There's, um, I think, there's twelve and a half people because Daniel Cowan, you know, he doesn't really do anything. We just add him in because he's part of Goonosphere. And so, let's, so what we do, we do like John Terry's made made monkeys out of people and so we just go and make caricatures of everybody at abw but they're only done on a computer so they don't actually physically exist anywhere other than in, in the computer and then we go right we're going to have there only be one of any of these for sale and then we're going to sell them and then we're going to keep some back we're going to sell six and keep six and then the ones that are sold people are going oh, well i want that there's going to be more oh that's worth more so we sell them all for a pound and then people go, well, I really want that. I really want that one of Chris on the boat with his, with his, with his hairy chest out. Or well, I'll buy that off you. I'll give you three quid for it. And then I go, well, if that's gone up bloody 300% from one pound to three pound, then a load of other people are going to go, well, I might have one of the others. They might go up. And then, then it was slowly graduation of a pyramid of everything going up in value. And then we go, well, we're going to let out the last six. And people go, oh, they're letting out the last six, right? Everyone's got to buy them. And then we go, well, thank you very much. We take all the money. See you later. Good luck with the things that don't exist. It's just clever people finding ways to fleece stupid people. It's just a bit. <laughs> Isn't it? I mean, I mean you, Danny. if anybody's... It's, it's am funny I wrong because you're, 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 you're not wrong, that, Danny. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. And the best part of this is it says in the article that all the players that were endorsing and pushing this John Terry thing that, you know, obviously fans love these players, you know, they've now all gone, sus you know, quiet and deleted all their, their mentions of it. Like after you've you've got, I'm sure some people have lost a lot of money in this John Terry scheme right now, mate. It's a massive red flag if anything involving <laughs> John fucking Terry. That, that's alarm bell should be ringing. That should be an automatic heads. no. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Uh, we we found out who Gen X forty eight K is. It's Brady's banana who's. Uh, who, who's regularly in the chat on the the post game YouTube comments? Uh, thank you very much, Brady's banana. It's very kind of you, and we get about one pound twenty five for everybody who gives us their prime. Do not give us actual physical money, people. Don't do it. We don't need it. But free money that you get one pound twenty five every month, isn't it, Nick? It's free money. You understand how Twitch works? Not really. I've only been on it for three years. I'm not really sure how I'm still no. allowed to be on it. Breaking news: Arnie. It says um, NFTs are like Tupperware. Yeah, uh, because it, the virtually see-through yeah, thunders put that, and uh, FM Pit has put stupidity, <laughs> and asks, "Is it is that what Arsenal bought when Özil arrived, a virtual player?" Well, <laughs> after about eighteen months, it seemed to be that it was. That's, that uh, that would be more William, wouldn't it? <laughs> William was uh, our virtual player. <laughs> but the gist is, if you can't, it's like betting. If you can't afford to lose it. Don't do it. You never see a betting company, the owner of Bet365 or Paddy Power going, my wife's left me. I've had to sell the house. And I've had to sell the house. I'm now living in a Premier Inn because I've, put, I've, I've spunked all my money on, on the betting and you lot won it off me. Never happens, people. There's no such thing as a broke casino or a broke bookie. They take all your fucking money. You're a mug unless because you're going to lose it. And they, they know that. It's an illness. Yeah. Betting is an illness. And these people lose their lives about it. There was a bloke, I was a documentary on the BBC a few years ago. And, and there was a bloke explaining how he manages to um, get around it by his connection. He was betting on tennis matches in America, in on the circuit in America. And he said, the way I make an app thousands on this is I've got a bloke at the match, watching the game, and the betting companies are so stupid because they don't care. Right. They were that far behind the game. His mate was telling him so and so is going to win this serve. He'd put a bet on it. He'd win it, and he kept doing that and making thousands out of them. Just people don't bet and don't go and buy virtual. I mean, um, uh, NFTs. No, no. when the league, when the Premier League starts doing this stupid thing, don't. I don't even know what great. they're doing, Fem. What is it they're planning to do? They're planning to sell fans coins or something that had to do with NFTs, and it's going to be a league wide, um, a league wide thing. So the Premier League had a meeting about it yesterday, apparently, 
to start selling fans these these coins or something that are NFTs. It's just an absolute like it's just no responsibility towards your fan. As someone said in the chat, the Premier League would would they say most club would sell their dead relatives in the club shop <laughs> if they thought fans would buy them. <laughs> That's Phil. He's one yeah. decent point of the show. Uh, but futures, um, if you want to do futures, just go and watch the stock market. Just go. And, there's a bloke on on Twitch called the Stock Guy. He's a down to earth bloke, and he just says every day he makes two or three hundred pound a day for most people. He makes thousands a day. As you with everything in life, don't spend it on stuff if you can't afford it. Don't go. Well, oh, I've got fifty quid here. Do I do I pay uh, the food bill for 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 a, a little delivery? I don't know if they do. do. I should ask the child. Or do I go and bet it on a horse at a hundred to one? Yeah, no, no, don't don't do that. But yeah, um, doing futures and trading in stocks and that lot. Just watch that for six months. You get a gist of it. Give it a go. Start off with a tenner. There you go. And I, I say this is someone who is about four hundred quid up on betting. Only by a mistake. It was when the New York Giants won the Super Bowl. One of the Diaz brothers oh, was fighting, so I put on. Goal. I know that's the last <laughs> time I bet. I put a triple on the. I think it was Arsenal and the and the Giants and the Diaz brother winning. And then afterwards, I went, "Oh fuck, that's not the good Diaz brother. That's the other one." Turns out he won anyway. So with about a twenty quid bet, I won a fortune. And that was the last time I bet. I went ha ha ha. And then Paddy Power closed my account because I didn't use it. Fuck them. <laughs> anyway, that's enough about betting. Um, oh, Stefan, who knows about money and things, said, Danny, you should clip that where he just said, NFTs are stupid <laughs> and put it up online. Well, friend of the pod as involved in NFTs, tweets about it sometimes, so I wouldn't want to annoy Big Kev. But uh, he probably knows more than I do, so I'm probably wrong. Um, anything else that people wanted to cover, talk about? We've been going for an hour. Should we talk about the Leicester game, news that... Vardy is out, Rich. Is that a good thing, or the fact that he only came back and played an hour in the last game, and now he's out again already? Is is that the, the is that the rumor that he's 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 not going to play? Radio Five I mean, said it today. Confirmed. Confirmed. Yeah. Oh, that's, I'll, I'll be glad for that because he he usually bloody scores against us, doesn't he? Old Vardy. He's, he's a very very good uh, very good striker. He's um, yeah. So I'm I'm glad that's you know one in, in the plus column. Um, I, I guess you know we, we've been quite formidable. Touchwood, we've been quite formidable at home. So um, anything again that, that tips it more in 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 our balance. Uh, they, uh, who's who's that other striker that they they bought? And he's is he Ian still Acho? doing well? No, not Ian. Uh, oh no, the one who scores loads of goals in Europe. Yeah, Pats and Pats and Dakar. Dakar. Yeah, how's he? How's he getting on? Is he is he still not doing Europe. business for them? In Europe is fantastic for the Premier League. And not so good. Not so good. Yeah, ho- like I said, hopefully they, um, um, like I said, no, no, no Vardy and we can continue our good our g- a good form um, at, at home. You know, it, like I said, we, we have been like really, really formidable and, and teams are starting to fear us again. Um, so, yeah, like I said, long may it continue. I'm looking looking forward to the, um, to the, to the last game. Is that Saturday or Sunday, that game? Sunday, 4.30. Sunday four thirty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm predicting that we're, we're gonna, we're gonna stuff them. We're gonna proper do them. I'm just looking at Pat's and Dakar's stats. Uh, what country is that? That is Zambia. Um, in the Premier League, he's had eight starts and five as a sub. So that's thir- uh, thirteen games, four goals. In the FA Cup, one and zero. The League Cup, three and zero. Community Shield, one and zero. But in Europe, seven games, six goals. I think one of them was a hat trick against a rubbish team. So um, yeah, the Europa League group stage, isn't it? I mean, yeah. we were we were racking up the goals in the Europa League. Uh, stage. Oh, look at that! Real Madrid have equalised. Oh, it was against. <laughs> oh, we got four goals. Four goals against Spartak Moscow in the group stage. So stat padding. He's gone full Eddie and Ketty there. <laughs> stat padding against that. shit teams. <laughs> And because they're playing tomorrow, aren't they, Leicester? So they're 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 going to yes. be. Um, so we we're, we're going to have a couple more days more rest than than them. So hopefully they're absolutely knackered um, when oh, they when I they rock that. up at the carpet. I said that today. I said it's a good thing they're playing tomorrow. Um, yeah, that's Europa Conference League they're in, aren't they? 
Mm. They're playing. They're playing Rins at home. But yeah, their defense has been pretty shambolic for the whole season, hasn't it? Um, I watched them against. Uh, I actually watched. Um, funny enough, yeah, they show all the games um, on TV in in America where I was, and they showed the um, the Leeds game on NBC or USA. I don't know what one of the channels out there. And I watched the Leeds game actually, and um, they were pretty. They were so lucky to win that. Honestly, they were Leeds were just just walking through them at will, you know. And Leeds, Leeds have been a, appalling. Of yeah, late, exactly. They? If Leeds had a striker, they definitely would have got something a lot more out of that. So you know, Leicester have just been a shambles at the back. So it's up to us. I think one thing that I did like the other day was Arteta calling out the defending against Watford because it, it helps us against complacency, you know. I think our season, let's be honest, our, our big run of games really start right now. You know, mm. going from Leicester to Liverpool to Villa, that is a tough, tough run of games. Um, just looking at their goals, Nick, uh, Leicester are doing pretty good at the moment. They've had back-to-back wins, but then excluding the Burnley game, they went. They, they they lost four games in a row away, and then they drew two. So if you look at those six games away from home, no, not even uh, no wins, and they conceded 10, 11, 12, 13, They conceded fifteen goals in six games away from home. Does that give you some kind of confidence that that we're going to be able to do something against them? Because they have been a, a hard team for us to play, haven't they? And if you look at our, I mean, apart from the Man City game, delete that because they were cheat. We were cheated. Then, um, if you do manage to delete that, that means we're unbeaten in good, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven home games. And in that eleven, we've had four, five, six clean sheets. Make of that what you will, Nick. Good luck. I'm going to sit back and uh, watch you sweat. No, I won't swear. I mean, I'm not that fussed about Leicester. I mean, they're sort of dropped off. I mean, weren't we the only team to beat them home and away when they won the league? Yep. As well. So And loads of goals. Yeah, and loads of goals and that. And, I mean, they're not a bad side, Leicester. I mean, I think they had a lot of games. I think between them and Burnley, they had the most games called off over... Christmas and New Year's time with COVID. I think they had like four or five games. They had I postponed. was just looking at that. They had five games cancelled out of seven from the yeah. 16th of December to the 16th of January in a month. Fuck. Yeah, plus I think didn't have a few go to AFCON as well. I'm trying to think. I did. Um, did they think he go to AFCON as well? Um, uh, uh, Ian, Ian Acho in, that, yeah, I think in Nigeria. Went. I think he went. Yeah, I think he went, and then Vardy was injured as well. So I don't think they really had like hardly any strikers. That's probably why their goals dried up. But I mean, you never know. I mean, Brendan, he's looking as grey as ever, and he the poor old <laughs> git. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, well, I always think sometimes we're better off to play someone that's got a bit of a confidence and actually want to have a game of football rather than just sit back and try to like block us from playing and get dirty and physical. You know, sometimes we when we see when we actually have a game of football, I think that's more entertaining as well. Because, you know, more end to end stuff. I think we usually do better with those sort of sides than, you know, like the Stokes, Blackburns, you know, people like that. So mm, I vaguely remember Ian Acho at the African Cup of Nations. I think he scored against the mighty Egypt. We don't talk about that, do we, Rich? No, we do not. No, so I uh, don't know who else went. So how do we feel about the game, Rich? What, if you had to go for a prediction, because none of you lot are on the preview show, I think it's going to be um, um, Matey Boy from America. Um, Chris, the Purple Lion, what are you going to go for? Uh, I'm going to go for a 2-0. A 2-0. Um, I reckon Saka is going to score again because he is, he is playing exceptionally at the minute. He is... He not only is he, is he doing good things, he's absolutely dominating his his opposite numbers, um, his opposite uh, uh, players at the minute, and he's he's you know he's he's dragging more players into him. He's being physical. He's you know open up space for other players. He's so so good. So I think I think he's going to score, and I reckon Lacazette is going to get a rare goal. I don't know why. I think he's going to get something's going to, I don't know, like a shot's going to go off off his ass or something or some little bit of a skullduggery. He's going to get a goal. I've, I've, I'm, I've got a feeling for um, 
for uh, for, for Lacazette. I, you know, I, I <clears throat> hopefully we can keep a clean sheet. I know we've been a, a little bit more open um, of late, but I think that's mainly due to the the fact that we we've actually been a lot more open and a lot more attacking. Um, you know, and what with the 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 kind of switch slightly away from that the double pivot and just having party in in there uh, the 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 base of um of midfield kind of thing but you know we're, we're attacking and we're having shots so i'm i'm with vardy out as well i reckon ramsdale's going to keep a clean sheet i'm going to go two nil oh femi uh three one simple mm, that's what i'm going with three one uh nick well, I keep going 5 0 when I'm pre- watching the preview show, but I'm always that's early in the morning or I've been like doing something I shouldn't have done. But I'll, I'll go something, I'll say 4 0. I'll be a little bit more realistic. I think we're going to get, I think we're going to get a pe- penalty finally this time, which is I think 10th time lucky. I was 10th uh, time lucky. I saw what was it? They said we should have had nine penalties, like the last nine penalty appeals that we haven't had. So I think we'll finally do one. Hmm. Um, well, let's do some questions. Um, uh, I've starred some of them. Uh, Femi, do you want to read the questions? We've got sure. in our in our comments for the, yep. ourselves. No, in our private chat, we've got three from Carl. And then I've starred. You see the starred bit? I've got four in starred as well. If you want to give me the one from FMT, because I know Pythagoras and me go way back. So go on. All right. All right. All right. All right. I'll go with... Rich, you go over this one first, then. Uh, with Wenger, uh, with the with the Wenger, fourth place is a trophy mindset. And if we get fourth this season, moving forward, is it good enough for Arsenal with Arteta at the Elm? Or do we need to win decent silverware? So basically, is fourth place good enough going forward? Or at some point, do we have to push on from fourth? No, at some point we 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 would have to 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 push on. Um, getting fourth this season will be an absolutely fantastic achievement, um, considering what um, came before it with the two eighth place finishes and the you know the absolute turmoil and upheaval that we've had. You know, I I think if pretty much most Arsenal fans, if you said they would have bitten your hand off for a fourth place finish. Um, at the start of the season. So I think it would be a, a fantastic achievement for this season. And then going forward, it's all about getting them to step up. You, you know, you, 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 you make some achievement, you come forth, you step up, you go again, you go again and you go again. And every, every time that ceiling becomes a little bit, a little bit higher for the, you know, the, the, the squad and you, and you get a little bit better and you want to achieve more. So in, in, in the short term fourth, I'll, I'll take that fourth place Wenger trophy, but, we need to be aiming for higher afterwards. Nick? What was the question again? Sorry, I was reading the thing. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> is, fourth, if, is fourth good enough? And if if so, for how long? Until we need to push on? Well, it depends who you ask, because fourth is never good enough. No matter what we achieve, for a lot of people, it's just never good enough. I mean, we had... Um, I went saw my dad Monday and he was listening to talk sport, which I keep telling him not to do. And he had his best mate on there, Adrian Durham, saying, oh, oh, Arsenal are celebrating getting fourth. They should be winning the league. Well, so just, there's nothing you can do, mate. They've just, they just got to do the best they can. And obviously, to actually try and win that league, that's going to be so hard to get past Man City and Chelsea, you know, over the last few years, the money they've got and spent, and, you know, and how good Liverpool have been so you know i don't know if that's a mindset or nothing like that because you know like i said they complained for all those years we got it and we didn't win trophies then we didn't get top four but we have won trophies like fa cups and that's still not good enough so you know i I suppose it goes on the individual what they think is good enough whereas really as long as they just do the best they can i know it sounds like sort of like a mother's thing i'll just just play your best and have fun but so it is really in it. Mm, mm. I, I managed to catch that Adrian Durham segment randomly because I haven't heard his yeah. voice in years. Mm. But randomly, I, I was in the car and I caught that. Yeah. And 
I swear to you, I listened for about five minutes and my blood pressure went up and I just yeah. turned it off. Yeah, I, but like, say, I, can't, I, they, like, I can't do this. I can't they, do this. You, but I say, mate, you just do it. And some, not just him, but a lot of people, they just do it deliberately to just wind people up, to get them to phone in and mm. pay money on the phones and then, you know, sponsor whatever that is. And he is he's never going to listen to what you say. I may remember. Of course not. Like, I mean, I think they said, because they said about the season ticket prices are going up, even though they've been, like, haven't they been, like, fixed for about three or four years? I mean, you know, because you've got a season ticket. I mean, it's like, and then they always come out with, oh, Arsenal have got the most expensive ticket, blah de blah blah And then that's, like, £180. I was like, no, it's not the most, that's not the cheapest <laughs> ticket, is it? And that's, like... You know, what was it like the silver one where you get a meal and a stadium tour and all that sort of thing? And I remember, which I think what his name was, he was a part of the Arsenal something trust. He he wanted to go on there and say, look, this is all the facts. This is what our season is. It Tim Stillman. Like. Yeah, that's the guy. And they just fucked him off every time. Oh, yeah. Whereas I think us and Newcastle have two of like the cheapest, you know, the cheapest cheats, cheapest cheap seats we can get like 25 or 26 quid at the time. But some people like that, they're just not going to listen, are they? I mean, just not, no matter, yeah, no matter what you could do that. with them, them sort of people, they're the sort of people, if you see them at work, you just got to laugh at them and pat on the head and just walk away. Yeah, Talk sport, there, much <laughs> like the Sun newspaper, is banned from my life. I have nothing to, I cannot stand oh, them. I, I, yeah, I, 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 I almost had it. I was, my blood pressure was going up. <laughs> Nick, let me ask you the next question. Out of 10, <laughs> what did the panel reckon of us getting third and not fourth? That's from Peter Little. Well, what are our chances, like, out of ten of getting, of getting third, third not... Yeah, third. I don't know. It all depends how Chelsea take what's, what's going on. I mean, that's obviously going to destabilise whatever they have been trying to do, and I'm not sure how they're getting on in um, Champions League and stuff like that, but... I mean, they've gone through the FA Cup to the next round. So, I mean, I said about, I think Danny asked this about a month or so ago. I think we all said different. I think we, I think Danny said fourth, I said fifth, and someone else said third. So, I think that's looking a little bit better now than what it was then. But, I mean, if I had to say now, I'd think we should be favourites for fourth because even if we lose our games in hand, that doesn't really matter because we've still got more points than United and um, Tottenham. So I suppose, I think that's a 50-50, not 50-50, sorry, maybe oh, out of 10. So that's why I'm doing that 50-50. Maybe a four out of 10 chance of getting fourth, maybe? Yeah. Getting third, Danny, sorry. What do you think, what do you think Danny, think third place? Yeah, uh, third is on because the teams above us are all playing in Europe still and Chelsea have just won the, the World Cup or whatever it is they won and they've played a load of games and uh, it's only now that um, they're Havertz and Zayech and that lot are finally having some kind of thing together but when they start getting that fixture congestion and we've just seen that um, Real Madrid have, have beaten uh, PSG 3-1 so that's 3-2 on aggregate um, I think uh, Benzema Hat trick on that. That's about to finish, and that's wonderful. Just hope that Man City get through, and Liverpool get through, and all the other teams around Chelsea all get through, and they get all the way to the final. And I don't care what happens, but then it make it easier for us because they'll be looking at us going, "Them lot playing one game a week. Wow, we're playing um, a game every four days, three or four days. It's not going to be easy because they're. I think they're all still in the FA Cup as well, aren't they? I think it. Yeah, for me, I think. Um... I think it's our fixture list. We got very tough fixtures. That's probably why we won't finish third. Um, Rich, what do you think? Out of ten, chances uh, of finishing out, third. Out of ten, I would say three. Um, yeah. I, I I think it's a bit. I think our fixture list, like you said, Femi, is 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 not as easy as, as it seems. Uh, you know, Chelsea for all the. Abramovich selling bollocks. That squad is is an excellent, excellent squad. Um, you know, Champions League winning squad. Um, I I think it's a, that's going to be a tough ask. I think we just take each game as it comes and 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 just try and win the next fixture in front of us and see where the chips fall at the end of it. But I I, I would I would go for a three, uh, out of ten chance. I didn't say mine's a six. 
<laughs> six out of ten. I'd, yeah, uh, I'll go. I'll agree with Rich. Three out of ten, probably that kind of level. All right, next question. Uh, Danny, you take this one. Uh, J Dubia, J Dubia or Dubia? Apologies for pronunciation. Um, does Xhaka being moved forward mean he's been transitioned out? So Xhaka has been playing further forward in this sort of. 4-3-3 slash 4-1-4-1 type formation that we've been playing. He's been playing further forward on the left side. Do you think that means he's being transitioned out? Um, well, I think that the uh, that person's name is JW, like John Welsh. I call him JW, possibly. Uh, I think it's more to do with finding the best position for party. I think that's more in Arteta's mind, trying to put him in. He's played him slightly ahead of Xhaka. And then he's played him slightly behind Xhaka. And it's definitely better because he got the Arsenal player in a month last month or for this month, which probably should have gone to Erdegaard. But it's good for Party that he's got it because he's such a, an influential and key part of what Arteta wants to do and cost an absolute fortune. He's one of the highest earners at the club. And it looked for so long that he couldn't string two or three decent games together. But now he's been playing regularly. Xhaka's playing next to him, making him look good. So um, I think it's so... My answer to that would be it's more about what's getting the best out of party rather than Jacka being transitioned out. But Jacka's on his way out anyway. He'll be gone in the summer. Yeah, I think I think that's right. Uh, and uh, let's just go for the last question. I'll go with uh, Rich first on this one. Matt Roberts, uh, what has been your biggest regret? <laughs> It's crazy. What's been your biggest regret watching Arsenal games down the years? Uh, he says his is going to the FA Cup game versus Watford. Remind me of that one, Matt. Was that was that a semi final, I think. Watford? We lost 1 0 at home or quarter final, yeah. I think. Was it four or semi? Because that would have been, I think that would have meant we would have been in five, four FA, one, two, three, four, five FA Cup finals in a row if we'd have got past them. Yeah, Matt, what, what one was that? Just remind us. But yeah, guys, what's been your biggest regret or biggest disappointing game, I would say? Uh, Rich, go for it first. You're on mute, mate. Uh, my biggest regret, I would originally said um, the the Champions League final against Barcelona. Um, but actually, the, the biggest one that, that left me absolutely gutted and devastated... I know what you're going to say here. I know what you're going to say. <laughs> ...was the Champions League um, quarterfinal against Chelsea. Oh, OK. I didn't expect that. <laughs> um, uh, where where we, we... In the first leg, we, we won 1-0. Um, I think was... Um, did Edu score the goal? Was it Edu? Or was it Lauren? I can't remember exactly. But we, we, we then had the second leg at Highbury. I think the first leg was 1-1. Was it 1-1 it was possibly? Okay, yeah, yeah, but we had the away goal, one. yeah. And then Wayne Bridge scored that in, like, in, the, in the last couple of minutes or whatever it was. And I remember at the time, I was working at um, the Arsenal World of Sport. Do you remember the, the club shop at Finsbury Park? Yep. Yeah, and um, so we, we had to. So on European nights, um, the 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 shop would be open for an hour after the game. So I remember at the end at full time, and we had to walk back to from from Highbury to Finsbury Park. We had to rush back there, and just the the biggest feeling of just deflation and let down and upset and I've never heard the stadium and so many people so quiet um like you know barely anyone came into the, came into the shop afterwards and the, the you know obviously you know you normally get the, the big queues going into the train station um at Finsley Park and, and on that you, you you could hear a pin drop there there was just silence Nobody was saying anything, and that was the year we should have won the Champions League. That year, that team, we were we were so so good. And you know, you think if we if had we have got past um, that evil Chelsea side, what well, it was it was Monaco and Porto. I think were the the teams that were going to be ahead of us, kind of thing. 
we then we could have so won that Champions League, and we would, you know, the we could have stopped Jose Mourinho in his tracks. We could have, you know, like you know, kill the uh, kill the, um, the 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 thing in its infancy. That you know, that whole thing with Mourinho. It was just that was the biggest regret. But it was just horrible feeling. Sorry, I waffled a little bit for that, but it was just ugh. Still yeah, that would that have been day. Wenger versus Monaco in the final, wasn't it? If we yeah, beat. yeah. That's what I think. Yeah. That's what that come down to. Nick, what's yours? Let's let's run through. It. I don't know if I like the right words regret because you know we're in this for the good and the bad. So I don't know if the you know if I work out. The, I mean the words regret. I don't know, but I remember like really bad time I felt was um the two thousand and one FA Cup final because like I said when um. Liverpool beat us, and um, they cleared, they cleared two off the line with their hands. And I think because I was um, how old was I? I was like 15, 15, 16. So I'd only like properly been watching football for a few years, and I think that was like one of the worst games where I just couldn't get my head around that everyone knew they cheated, but we still ended up losing. I couldn't. You know, that's, I mean, now, you know, oh, you know, football gets get tucked up by the referees or whatever. We, we just expect that every week now. But that was like one of the first times in my head I thought, oh, well, we can get cheated. You know, I, I just thought whoever turned up on the day and played well won. I just didn't realise, and obviously we've been done, not just us, but other games where we're played well and been tucked over and stuff like that. But and things like that. But then I think we played like crap against United in 2005 and ended up winning it. But I don't think we cheated. But, you know, that's the regret. That's the thing you take as a football. You, you know, one team's going to win, one team's going to lose. I mean, I remember the bet in the space of about a minute, I had the worst ever football experience in my life as I went to a Monday night football where we played um, at the Emirates against um, Newcastle. So I remember I booked, I, I think they were like only about two tickets I ever got of my red memberships. And obviously, because, you know, they went to that. And basically, I remember Tim Krull wasted so much time. And when they put about six minutes, you were probably there, weren't you, Femi? And um, was it, I can't remember, if, I keep forgetting if that was Koscielny or Vermaelen. Vermaelen. It was Vermaelen. Vermaelen. Like, in like the six minutes of stoppage time. And I remember it was cold. It was, I think it was like November. <laughs> And I'd like drive there myself, parked up. I was sat there, I was like, come all the way here on my own. It was freezing cold. And that twat, and obviously, because um, he played for Norwich now, so I don't like I like him even less now. He's even closer to me. And I just felt so down and miserable and cold. And then he scored in literally the last minute of the stoppage time that they made by time wasting. And then it's just gone in, and we all absolutely lost our fucking shit in the stands. And that was brilliant. And, that, and that's just what it is with football, isn't it? One goal can just completely change everything, just change your mood. And then I think I didn't get home till about five o'clock in the morning. Because I think, you know, because I had to go and find my car and that. And like, I think that was quite busy traffic to get back out. But yeah, so don't know if that's a regret, but it's a nice <laughs> Danny, story. do you want to answer it or you want to move on? Oh, mine's easy. I was at uh, FA Cup weekend. It was Arsenal v Liverpool at uh, possibly Highbury. And it was also uh, um, Peter Rowe v Newcastle. I decided to go and watch Peter Rowe Newcastle. I think they beat, New um, beat Peter Rowe 6-1 and Arsenal smashed Liverpool 4-0 or 5-1 or 4-1. <laughs> I remember thinking, for fuck's sake, why did I do that? Not very often we used to smash them back then. Did you answer it, Fem? Mine so, sorry, uh... sorry Femi. Yeah, what on. did you think mine was going to be? But was the one I'm gonna say Birmingham uh, League Cup final? Oh, that was uh, oh, that yeah, was because you, you, because we hadn't won a trophy for many many years at that point, and I was sick of hearing that you haven't won a trophy for five years, six years, seven years, eight years, and we just had a chance to just put that to bed, and it was just literally Birmingham who got relegated that season. It was like you know when you turn up thinking this is just a, a gimme. 
It's it it was we're gonna win. 4-0 about three weeks earlier as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it was like, yeah, of course we're gonna win this. We had Van Persie, Sesk, and all of that. Uh, we was we was yeah, of course we're yep, yeah, and that was yeah. But yeah, let's not let's not deal with that anymore. <laughs> yeah, what, what, what a horrible <laughs> question to end on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. No, let, let's now. let's do a couple of quick fire ones and then we'll we'll we'll, we'll I'll hand it over to Danny. Um one from Carl actually, uh from FBW. Uh, if we don't make uh, top four this season, uh, has it been a failure? Uh, let's just do yes or no's on this one, Danny. Yes. Oh, Rich. Yes, from where we are now. Yes. Yeah, from where we are now. Not at the beginning of the season, <laughs> we would have been happy for top six, but now. Yes. Same with Danny. Yeah, it would be from, I still, from today. I st- I still say no because. I've had a look at our fixture list and it is horrible. Don't I think care. we're in for a bit of a shock. <laughs> no, don't care. We're the Arsenal. <laughs> I'm giving him excuses. <laughs> um, another one. Um, uh, he asked about Chris. We talked. We, we spoke about Chris anyway. He said, uh, "Do you do, do you think Chris is choking on his humble pie right now?" <laughs> because of the words we we did we did cover that already, Carl. So don't worry about that. And he had a question for me. So since I've met both Danny and himself in real life, how much better looking is Carl than Danny? Um, I'll let Josh answer that. I plead the fifth. <laughs> uh, two, two, two lovely, lovely looking people. <laughs> Let's put it like that. You should have said Sean was right. a better looking out of the two of us. <laughs> you got away with that. There you go. <laughs> And last but not least, JW. Got it right that time. Um, how many of us wishing for a Champions League return are ready for a 10 to buy-in result? <laughs> I don't know. Was it him with the last question? Does he just want us to... He wants us I, I, to be unhappy I was, tonight. <laughs> I was happy at the start of this podcast. I'm getting bummed out now. I'm getting, getting depressed. <laughs> No, I think we'll be all right in the Champions League if we get there. Why not? I think we've been out for so long. What part are we going to go in, though? If not, I'm not saying we're there now, but would we be in part two, probably? Won't we? Because we made would a couple we? of Europa League finals. Oh yeah, uh, they take that into account. Yeah, we still. Yeah. So, I mean, it's only, only our, yeah. the last five years of Europe altogether, don't we? So, nah, we'll be all right because yeah, we've made a, a few European semis and finals. Uh, Europa League actually probably helped us more than more than anything, um, but yeah, uh, long live the Spursiness of Pochettino. That's all I've got left to say. So, Danny, back over to you. Something I uh, said on the show yesterday that Spurs are the only team that I know, I know of in history that have gone Champions League one season, next season Europa League, next season the European Conference, and the next season nothing. That is hilarious. <laughs> Just shows what a quality team they are, and they've got all them bills to pay. Um, there was there was one other question. It was from FMT. Uh, what's a hypotenuse? It's the longest side of a right-handed right-handed triangle. Right-handed, the right side. Either way, there you go. Well, it's something like that because uh, I did stuff like that. I didn't really just duck duck go it. I think that's all. Um, we just need to see if anybody, any of you lot, got anybody you want to give a little wave to, a gentleman's nod, a howdy doody, or what you're up to. Um, oh, anyone's looking at me? I'll just wave if you've got someone. No one's waving. Does anybody want to say hello to? Come on, make something up. <laughs> uh, okay, I'll just uh, I'll, I'll do my usual thing. H- uh, hello to the girls of of Hanwell Town under thirteens. Uh, we got a, a match this Saturday against Vicky Park Rangers, and hopefully we we stuff them. Um, yeah, uh, the uh, back um, after my my COVID season, I was back, back training with the girls on 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 Monday night um, at uh, goals in Osterley, hearing all the usual nonsense at football and the ever more cretinous no shot, no shot, no shot, which annoys the crap out of me. So what yeah, does that mean? Go. Ah, oh, you you see it at five aside. So there's always some douchebag going no shot, no shot, no shot. Uh, I don't know what that means. It, don't shoot. It means don't allow anyone to shoot. Yeah, Ugh. drives me insane. Well, do you tell these people got to go? Oh, you shut the fuck up. Would you do that? 
Because I uh, would. Yeah. Yes, 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 I do. Yeah. Oh, good. Well done. If, if you need any backup, um, let us know and I'll send Carl down your way. Sounds good. Because he's, he's, uh, he's not someone you want to mess with unless he's wearing his whites, like he needs a picture there, then he doesn't want to get blood all over it. Femi, have you got anyone you want to say hello to? Yeah, I'll give a quick shout out to Vic Dyerine. Dyerine on Twitter. His name is at Soft Tip. S U A F T I double P. He followed me this evening, um, I'm guessing from the tweets that were sent out. So I'll just give him a little shout out um, as a new follower there. Oh, that's nice. You, Nick? Anyone? Well, maybe. I mean, Chelsea are playing um, Norwich tomorrow. So if um, Holly Valance is there tomorrow with her husband looking at buying Chelsea, if they want to meet me outside Delia's, I'll, I'll show them around Norwich. Well, Holly, he can he can do one. <laughs> Why is there games on a Thursday night? There's four bloody games. A catch yeah, up, they isn't can't, it? Can't, can't play on the Champions League now. COVID. They can't yeah, play on the Champions League night, can they? I thought they changed that. So you could. Don't like that. Um, fuck them. Um, I think my gentleman's nod's going to go to, uh, I was going to say Josh, because he's he's in the chat, and uh, we're worried that Hybri Squad might steal him away, but they can't afford him. So I'm going to give it uh, to uh, <laughs> Brady. Did you just see that comment, Josh, about me snapping my arm? <laughs> <laughs> that is very true, Josh. That is very true. But uh, if they stopped the shot, you wouldn't have broken your arm. Yeah, that is very true. Very true, mate. Um, well, I think someone's picked mine. It's JW says, Danny, can I get a howdy doody to my wife and I, please? Well, hello, de doody to JW and JW's wife. That's the absolute most I can do because that's the kind of guy I am. Right, people, with one hour and 30 minutes, my God, an hour and a half podcast that lasted an hour and 30 minutes. Thank you to everybody um, who watched us uh, here tonight live and everybody who's going to listen to us on the bus on the toilet, in the bath, or doing a little bit of exercise. All those of you that are listening while asleep because you listen to another pod and it's gone on to this one, which is why our very first podcast on SoundCloud has nearly 20,000 listens. And I thought, why is that? Until Jeff in Canada said, well, because after they listened to the last show, it goes back to the very first show again. So I thought, oh, wow, maybe they really like the show. No, they didn't. They didn't really like it. It just goes back to number one at the beginning of every playlist. So screw you guys. And so uh, that's it. Oh, look, Gary's finally turned up. There you go. And uh, that's it. So thank you very much, Richard. When can we see you again? Any idea? I have no idea, but I, I, like I said, I'm now COVID-free, so I'll, I'll be a, a, a lot more prevalent in on some shows. But thank you for having me tonight, Dan. It's been an absolute uh, joy. Someone commented they liked all of your books and DVDs in the background. I can't remember who it was. Femi, thank you very much. Good to have you back. Will we be seeing you on any of the post-game shows? Yeah, later games. Not home games, obviously, but yeah, Ooh. later games, evening kickoffs, and yeah, uh, I'll be reading all the chats. So yeah, it's been quality tonight. Thanks everyone in the chat room. Excellent, Nick. Um, I might come in and watch you when you're doing your Twitch. Tell people your Twitch channel because at the moment we have got 268 followers on this on our own one. So those 268, you should go. Where should they go, Nick, and follow you? They can go like, to my channel, which is called. Nick fights. I don't say acts because it's just Nick no. fights on Twitch. Certainly is. That's right. Thank you very much for joining us, Nick. That's uh, I think that's two shows in a row that you've done now, isn't it? You did the post game show the other day, Watford. Now this one. Yeah, I'm always available. You know this. Yes. Except when oh, yeah. I'm not. Apart from when you're not. So uh, thank you very much. We're going to go now. We will be back with the preview show on Sunday at about quarter past three. And then the post-game show, which is going to be about half past six. And then later that night, it's going to be the fifth instalment of the Sunday Roast with me and Michael Feinberger, where we're going to uh, talk absolute shit and nonsense for an hour and a half to two hours. So thank you very much, everybody. And uh, up your bum. Goodbye.